I'm logged into a, a remote restaurant here. Everything that you will see will look exactly the same on site at a restaurant. Uh, the only difference is being uh, on site, there'd be a number pad for uh, user login as well as a clock in and clock out. Uh, so this allows the uh, owner to, to be away at home or on holiday, access the restaurant directly to view live data without interrupting the operations of the restaurant and still have the exact same interface as if they were uh, on site. So we'll just uh, start uh, with some order taking on the front end. <clears throat> Once we log in, we have a fully customized table map along with multiple sections. So depending on the size of the restaurant, they might have a patio or an upstairs section. And we'll uh, start with popping open the table here. I have a two-tier menu set up, so as I go through my different categories, my various items show below. As mentioned, we take care of this initial menu uh, pad setup. The menu pad is pretty flexible, and I'll get into how to edit that a little bit later. Start with a basic order, a, uh, what I? <clears throat> a Bud Light. Pints of beer for happy hour or a dollar off. You'll be able to have specialized sales rules that will in, uh, dictate days and times when specific items are uh, being discounted and automatically manage those discounts. So you don't have to worry about servers remembering to or having separate buttons or creating new buttons to manage those specials and then having to consolidate those sales at the end of the night. <clears throat> We'll order some uh, Fiesta fries. Yeah, it's also breaking down by uh, course. Uh, so we have coursing available. It can be turned on or off uh, depending on uh, the restaurant's needs. So we'll send this off with the print routing. Our drinks can go to the bar, food can go to the kitchen. If you have a hot printer and a cold printer, your items can uh, route accordingly. After the bill has been printed, and we'll just do a simple uh, close. 11 for, uh, 34 is the total, and we'll note here the uh, total with this uh, cash discount. Uh, so if I were to just, if they handed me $15, it manages that cash dis discount appropriately and provides with the correct amount of change. If we move on to a little bit more complex order, we'll pop open our table again. We'll start with a couple of beers and we'll uh, get some Fiesta fries again. And then we'll move on to the entrees. We'll get a, a burger. I don't like tomatoes, so we're gonna modify our, our hamburger and I'm gonna say no tomatoes. You'll notice the tomato has a, a price of 50 cents. Instead of having multiple tomato buttons, so no tomato, more tomato, less tomato, we have a single tomato button with the price associated with it and then a command line that dictates how that item is going to be charged. When I say no tomatoes, it won't charge that 50 cents and it's a way to keep the modifier screen a little bit cleaner. If there's force modifiers, it can automatically move to the modifier screen and with something like a steak, there could be a forced uh, cooking temperature. So I need to select at least one cooking temperature before I can move forward. This ensures for any items that have specific modification requirements, it's not forgotten by the server. All modifiers are printed in the red uh, in red in the kitchen if you're using uh, impact printers, uh, or if you're using a kitchen display, there's uh, different color coding as well to indicate a different uh, bills and, and modifier types. You'll see it's also tracking the seat number on the left hand side. So when we're using coursing and automatic seat tracking, it for a table of two, as I enter in my, my appetizers or my drinks, my appetizers and my main courses, it'll automatically reset for each new course to be assigned appropriately. This will come in really handy when uh, with uh, bill splitting, which I'll get to in a moment. We'll be able to add guest information. We have our full list of uh, past invoices. <clears throat> and we can reorder any of these invoices. 
my top items that I've ordered over the history of being a customer, as well as uh, different notes. Like, and we'll say okay. And now, uh, because I'm also a VIP, I've, I have a discount associated with my uh, with my customer uh, account, so I'm automatically getting a discount. We'll send this off again. The print routing. If uh, I'm splitting my my check. We have various different options to make a server's life a little bit more uh, easy and efficient. Because we had seat tracking on, it's already split the uh, the seats. So if I wanted to just do a print split and print one of those uh, long checks that breaks down by seat or have it uh, cut off for each one, I'd already be able to do that. I can also make them their unique invoices. And if we're taking these Fiesta fries and we're sharing them, I can divide by two. I can make them their own unique invoices. I can add additional invoices. I can move items over. And now I can close each invoice individually. With um, credit card processing, if you're using a wired device, they'd be able to do a traditional style where uh, you insert the chip and it'll print off a receipt with the tip line as mentioned earlier. Once the uh, customer has filled in their tip in total, you'll be able to do a tip adjustment uh, at the end of the night or right on the fly when you come back to the uh, to the till. Non-cash tips are seen as, uh, so that your tips will be reported as a non-cash tip, which will make it a lot easier for your, uh, for the servers to do their reporting at the end of the, the night. Uh, so it'll all be recorded as a non-cash tip. Now this way, when they print up their cash out report, they're just gonna be handing back the cash total to the restaurant. On the, the receipt, it will show what the total is with the cash discount, uh, as well as showing the preview for the server. And it's just high, uh, down here, the total with cash discount, 1406. And if you type in anything over that, it will report the change back pro, uh, appropriately, as I showed before. Or if they type in, let's say, the actual total, it should just come up as the zero change. And it'll reflect what that uh, service charge and discount should be. I just uh, also want to touch on uh, for bars. Uh, there is a way to um, manage like roamers, so you can have multiple people just labeled however they'd like by name or, or uh, identifier. I'm often the guy with the mustache. <laughs> um, and you'd be able to come in and do uh, round reorders. So you can actually select multiple items. And then by hitting the plus, we can add another round of those items, make it a lot easier when a, a table's reordering a round of drinks, especially when you're doing seat tracking. So. When a server's at the table, they can see seats one, three, and five. You wanted another round, you just have to highlight those seats and push. You don't have to worry about remembering even the drinks at that point. Uh, full pickup and delivery options. And uh, if a uh, restaurant has delivery, you have full access to delivery maps for um, uh, dr driver assignments, making it a lot easier to, to manage your, your deliveries. And all this can also be, all these orders can be um, placed by the actual customers for online ordering. So all that's controlled right from the back end. It syncs to a landing page that we host uh, that we can skin to look like the restaurant, uh, restaurant's website and color themes. Uh, Quiznos would be a good example of that. If you go to any Quiznos online ordering, that's powered by uh, our software. And they would be able to order and pay online and go right directly to the store uh, for pickup or for delivery. It could pop up a notification. It could just print right to the kitchen, just like Starbucks. Uh, also with reservations, 
you'd be able to have wait lists and reservations. The reservations are available to be placed online as well. If I were to do a walk-in, again, we can select our customer account, party of two, and your booking notes. You'll be able to send a text message page to the guest and let them know that their table is ready. You can do a arrival count, so if it's a larger party, and they can see that you know two people have already been uh, sat, so that way the uh, hostess knows exactly where to lead the uh, the guests that arrive after them. <clears throat> You'll have a live capture of your current summary. Again, also everything is user group based, so you'd be restricting what uh, users have access to what areas of your system. Uh, but here, like a manager might come in to be able to see an overview of the restaurant. <clears throat> if there's wage tracking and inventory tracking, it'll give you a cost of goods, uh, um, estimated labor cost percentage, as well as a summary of invoices that are open. So that is uh, it from the front end, and so I'll, I'll move into a bit of the back end. So moving on to our back end. Gonna hide my we'll start with uh, with uh, menu uh, management here and again if you're logged in from home this is exactly uh, what it would look like on your restaurant if it's a single restaurant the the changes are live if it's um, multi-unit restaurants then once they make the change, they just have to sync it down, and that takes uh, about 10 seconds to do the sync. Uh, so we'll head into our menu management. I'm going to go to the, the table uh, service menu that we were working on before, and I can come into our desserts, and maybe I'll add a uh, and a cream pie. That's what I'm feeling like today. Say it's six dollars for a slice, and then I have to just drag and drop, and that's it. It's live on the menu. No need to restart computers, change anything. It inherits all the taxes as well as all the modifier properties. So if that was say a hamburger, it's already adding all the you know standard condiments and modifications that would go with the burger as well as taxes. Uh, so it's very very quick to add a new. Uh, item or even just pull it off. It's just all drag and drop. Price changes, uh, not something that they'll use super often, but when they do, it'll save them a bunch of time. Uh, so if I come into, uh, say, our burgers categories, I can tab through and make price changes. I can set all prices to be, say, plus 25 cents more. I can take a particular price of 1550 and I want all those 1550s to actually be $16. I can change it by percentage as well. This will, will just be really efficient. So instead of spending four hours going through each and every item individually, changing prices, I can select my categories and just fly through it and really uh, reduce the time and effort uh, that would go with um, doing a price change. For uh, <clears throat> for headquarters, so if you have multi locations, I'm just going to go back to our table service menu. On the left hand side, you will have a list of all the stores. Those stores can be categorized by region uh, or by area manager, however you like. You can select all stores or specific regions and make changes to their menu pad or prices. Those prices would be specific for the store selected. So if we're ma making changes just to the Northeast, it's only the Northeast prices that are going to be changed. This allows much more flexibility in being able to edit uh, menu pads and menu items, as well as manage different promotions different uh, for different stores and regions. And then I just have to hit a sync button and it pushes it out to all the stores. So if I need an uh, example of um, a franchise like Quiznos, they need to add a single item. They select all 700 stores, so it's done in one shot. Uh, 
Uh, reporting, we have a lot of stock reports that are already with our system. I'll just cover a few of the most common ones. Of course, we have the cash out report. And uh, our data is perpetual, so you can go back as far in time for whatever date range you want. I might be a little aggressive there, so I'll do. So here I pulled a report for the last year. It's breaking down my cash, any petty cash, my credit cards, sales taxes. Gift cards activated and redeemed. So we do have a gift card service as well. Be able to uh, purchase gift cards from one location, use them at a different location. There would be reporting that would give them a breakdown of, of who owes what uh, and where. Uh, here I'm just showing a lot of payments. Again, uh, a lot of our, our software is very customizable with different uh, toggles and flags. I can just, we can turn that off. I have it on, for example. Discount breakdown, invoice discounts, item discounts, the, the number of them and the, the total. Activity logs give you a quick overview of any um, recalled invoices or reclosed and deleted invoices. This would be your very first indication of if you need to dig down deeper into any particular actions, which I'll get into a little bit more. A ticket, a ticket averages for different dining types, Category summary, so breaking down if you want to break down food versus alcohol. Sold shift summaries if you want to have your lunch shift and dinner shift broken down. And this is the same report that the server would use at the end of the night, except it would just be for their sales. And then they can also add at the bottom uh, tip out percentages. So if, if they're doing 1.5% of the food net sales going to the kitchen, it'll have that total for them already, so they don't have to worry about doing the math. Daily system sales, very similar to the cash out report, this is a more office friendly version, it breaks uh, down things a little bit more de in more detail, including total operating costs, <clears throat> if they're doing inventory as well as labor, and actions. This gives a little bit more detail into the different uh, actions that would be of interest to management team. And then if you see something that's a little bit higher than it should be, you'll be able to dig down in invoice logs and see who did that action, who approved that action. Uh, we'd be able to view the actual invoice and see you know, what steps it took to get to that, to that point where they're doing a delete nonsense item. This would be especially crucial when it comes to training as well as being able to spot any theft issues that are happening at the store. Sales by categorized inventory. This is also called sales mix in a lot of uh, different systems out there. Uh, again, customizable, we can decide you know, what categories, what sort order, what columns you're viewing. Uh, this example is just breaking down you know, what are menu prices, what are average prices of it sold, and that's taking in different considerations like discounts, number that we sold, the sales percentage and values. Very common report being used in restaurants and important. One of our uh, most, uh, I'd say, important features here is our advanced reporting. Advanced reporting allows you to build pivot table style reporting directly in the back end of our software. Uh, so when you have customers that are taking the reporting very seriously and they really want to have a high, uh, highly customized report, uh, there's a good chance that they'll, all, they'll be able to build it with our existing interface already. Uh, and if not, we provide uh, a way for them to still uh, do that with live data directly in uh, Google Sheets. So I'll start with an example of uh, this chart report. And here's a uh, breakdown of just uh, some net sales by invoice for each hour. Uh, and I can highlight and view those totals in our donut chart, as well as I can select multiple invoices for easier uh, reading and even open up specific invoice and see the history and see what that invoice looks like or reprint it. 
the way this report is built is by dragging and dropping the different fields into my different uh, tables here. So with almost all the fields that you can think of available, uh, that this gives the user a lot of flexibility in building uh, new reports. We have various different types of reports that they'd be able to, to build in advanced reporting, such as purchase reports, invoice reports, user group reports, gift card reports, and so on. The system has a full API, so you'll we'll be able. This is how we'll be able to build a report in, um, say, Google Sheets. Uh, we'll assist with the, that report building, and it might take multiple reports utilizing this API, and we'll load it into Google Sheets, and then we'll be able to just pull from that data in the sheet to custom create the report to view the way they'd like it to be. Uh, to be shown, and that's all live data. So they just have a, a link to their Google Sheet, they type in the date and time, and it just pulls directly from their store and loads that data. Trend analysis, this is another uh, visual reporting tool. I'm just going to take my net sales. I can go back as far in time as I like. I'm going to go all the way back to 2009. And here I can select, I can see what my net sales are for the year, the month, the day, and the hourly breakdown. I can select my day and see my breakdown. If uh, we're heading into that next December and I know that I've increase sales by about 30%. I can add that trend and see how I'm looking for that next year. I apologize if you can hear my assistant upstairs. <laughs> employee hours, be able to track uh, your employees hours, uh, overtime and holiday pay. So employees in the front end will be able to clock in and clock out. I'm going to just add some test hours here. So uh, 6 a.m. to 4 p.m. And you have different legends for if uh, if users currently clocked in or if they're waiting to be approved, their, their um, hours to be approved or not. Here I'm a cook at $12 an hour, 10 of those at regular time, and two of them at uh, uh, overtime pay. And the way that uh, eligibility is set, is by enabling uh, if they're being paid on you know paid holiday or working on paid holiday or, or over shift limit and setting what those eligibility uh, requirements are depending on your uh, state or province. We have preset holidays already so now the staff uh, your management team will not have to worry about calculating and figuring out what their uh, overtime or holiday pay is going to be it'll automatically populate in those employee hours uh, will they'll be able to give access to their accountants uh, to directly to the system uh, and then they can uh, log in and view uh, run a report for the employee hours and they just have to handle deductions you can also set up automated reports where you say what reports are being uh, emailed to whom and at what uh, frequency that it's being uh, sent uh, this also includes being able to send a QuickBooks export. Uh, so if they want to be importing uh, sales directly into their QuickBooks, it'll send that uh, export and they just need to import into their QuickBooks. I'll just cover a little bit about uh, inventory and uh, online ordering. And then I think that uh, we'll pretty much cover things. So heading back into our menu section. Uh, 
of a generic vodka here, but uh, I right within the, that same menu uh, editing section, we can dictate you know what the minimum stock levels are, what our stock unit is, how we're reporting on it, and what those unit conversions are. We'll be able to build recipes based on those uh, um, your different inventory items as well. So get a, a cost and profit report. And as I add my different ingredients, it'll show my uh, my costs in this, on a four week weighted average uh, based on your purchasing history. Here we also add our menu, menu pad images if you want a special image for the menu pad or web images. Uh, that'll show online for online ordering. Online dashboard allows us to view recent orders as well as make edits to all of our uh, the stores services what they're accepting whether it be uh, pickup and delivery uh, what times that's available for. There's also order throttling, which will allow your guests to only take so many orders for certain increments of time, so as, as, as to not overwhelm uh, the kitchen. There's also full Google Analytics integration, as well as Google Tag Manager. Uh, so you'll be able to use different pixel uh, trackings from different um, uh, sites such as Facebook uh, so they'd be able to do analytics on how users are using their online ordering so that they could make it more efficient in terms of how they're presenting things. Uh, system configuration again a lot of options if you can think of uh, like a different way to utilize the system. There might be a good chance that we have that uh, functionality available. Uh, just to give a few examples. Let's see, order screen. Uh, it'll you can choose you know if you're using the course bar or not. You know what are the quick quantity buttons that you want to use? How are we handling multiple price actions? What are the more options? that are available from that order screen, what order do you want them to be shown in? You're also able to control uh, this from headquarters. So to have best practices for across all of the franchise chains, they'll be able to control it across the board. So any store they go to, they're using the same user groups, the same uh, more options, organization, and so on. That way it's a, a much more unified and consistent uh, unit across the board.